welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the final round of the Formula College CIL Championship, the CIL Formula College Series. Proud to be here. Be happy. Be glad because tonight it is going to be done for the season, unfortunately. But that means the racing is just about to get even better. As tonight, we are at the Brazilian Grand Prix. It is a thank you, Zach Lindler GP, presented by Keith. Love you, Keith. And love you, Zach Lindler. But of course, before we go on to the nitty gritty of the track, before we get into the, into the action pack racing that we're going to see for our final, our penultimate lap, uh, penultimate race of the season, I should say. It's been an honor to be here. But before we go on into our track map and talk about the track layout, let's show a little bit of a uh, of a gratitude that we have towards Zach Lindler, our Formula College uh, director, because we have a special video. So check it out. For the past two and a half years, Zach Lindler has been a part of the Collegiate I Racing League in a variety of capacities. As a driver in the Flexor College Cup Series and the College Formula Series. Uh, admin, broadcaster, overall member of the CIL community. And, you know, he's been a, an integral part of it over the past few years. And, you know, we've got a, a few people here who want to thank Zach for the uh, the years of commitment he's put into the CIL and uh, some of the thoughts they've had on the contributions that he's made. Hey, Zach, it's uh, it's Alex, your uh, co-commentator here on the Flexor College Cup Series side on Monday nights here on the CIL. I uh, want to thank you for everything that you've done for the CIL over the past couple of years, man. We came in at the same time, you know, season three, both of us drivers for our respective schools. And, you know, after driving, we both went to the broadcasting route. You also took on some of the admin stuff. Uh, you've you've done basically everything there is to do in the CIL in some capacity. And uh, I just want to say that we, uh, we all appreciate everything that you've put into it over the past few years here. And I've enjoyed being up in the booth with you. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'll get over... Uh, you wrecking me at Texas our rookie season and putting me up on the uh, the outer catch fence wall, but that's neither here nor there. Either way, appreciate everything you've done and looking forward to seeing what you do next. Right, there's a bit of a spin in the final corner. It looks like that Daniel and Rodriguez potentially back to the end of the wall as down the inside Zachary Lindler goes on Christian Hill. Christian Hill breaks super early. That's going to give Jeremy Rogers the opportunity to maybe make a move down. With Zach Lindler in his first career podium from Lennar Ryan University, just a couple of tenths behind Munoz. Man, what a what a ride it's been uh, through uh, what season two, three, um, of the Orange Wheel Crew, and uh, I think that uh, well you'll you'll still be around. I hope um, you know posting on Wednesdays in, in Discord, but a very positive impression I think is what you're you're leaving um, behind in, in CIL, um, and I think that's that's something not a lot of people can say. Uh, from uh, you know the uh, the humor alpha videos with the uh, the music and stuff to like being able to um, ideate come up with the formula college concept you know see see a need meet it um, I, I think that's you know one of the biggest lasting impacts uh, anybody has had on on the league and the community ultimately giving people that arena to do what they want and uh, that ability to be quick to action I think is going to suit you no matter where you go um, what comes next. And, uh, you know, I think the other part of that that, like, I think stands out very well for you is your ability to include people, to recognize people, um, to see that they are, uh, you know, they, again, they want an arena to, to play with. Um, you're giving them something to, to make their own, um, which is, is super fantastic um, and, and rare, too. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll uh, be around, I hope. Don't be a stranger. Uh, in Discord, and uh, yeah, obviously you will excel, uh, you know, whatever comes next and wherever you uh, are led, um, you know, you're, you're going to kill it. Uh, you've got the skill sets to do it, and uh, I'm excited, man, uh, to see what's next. Down through turn nine for the last time here into turn ten. We're going to see who can send it harder. This is the final corner of the race. Will Burns or Leaf do anything? Burns looks to the inside, going to try to get earlier on the brakes. Has position and knocks Preston out of the way. Preston is off and Burns is going to drive away and win this sprint race. He will win sprint race number two at the West Coast Grand Prix. 
Hey, Zach. Just wanted to say thank you so much for everything that you've done for the CIL in FC and in commentating the College Cup Series. Thank you, Zach, for being our admin for FC. Hey, Zach. I just wanted to make this video to thank you for everything that you've done for this league. Hey, Zach. It's Kale and Lucas. I just want to say thanks for everything you've done with the season. Hey, Zach. Thank you so much for all your hard work and uh, your help with the CIL. Thank you, Zach, for everything that you've done for the CIL throughout the years. Thank you, Zach Lindler. Thank you, Zach. Hey, Zach, thank you for all you've done in Formula C these past couple of seasons. Zach, I wanted to say thank you. Your impact on the CIL has been incredible. Hey, Zach, it's Alex. I want to thank you so much for everything you've done. Lindler, thank you for everything you do for the CIL. Hey, Zach, I want to just quickly say a big, big thank you. First off, man, thank you um, for everything that you've done. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to say uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to become a Cup Series steward. Hey Zach, thank you for everything that you've done for CIL. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the final round of the Season 3 of the Formula Collegiate World Championship presented from the CIL tonight. Here we are at the famed Interlagos for the Thank You Zach Lindler Grand Prix. My name is Nick Stockner. I am your commentator tonight. We've been paired together for a couple races this season. Nurburg Green and Road Atlanta to be the truth. And they decided to bring on the best commentator in the series to bring in one more round tonight. We got two great spent races on. But first of all, I want to get a little bit serious for a second. If the camera could be pointed. Zach, I remember hiring you to be a driver in season three. I remember to be, I remember hiring you as a driver for my team on Clemson Esports, which eventually would become OWR. And through the years, um, we have shared the track numerous times, and then you evolved beyond driving for my team and being a really good friend, a really good person to come to, and a really good person to just talk shop, just talk race cars with. I know this is not the last we've ever seen of you in this series, but... Higher powers and higher beings have called you to go to a different path. And we are forever grateful for the actions that you have presented and the labors of your work here in the CIL. No matter where you go, go with grace, go with dignity. And as always, keep racing, my friend. And now we are back to the main event. We're looking here tonight, here at the famed Interlagos racetrack. Famed for being the track that in the mid to late 20, uh, 2000s, 2010s would end the Formula One season. But this track has many famous moments, both in CIL history and in real life history. For those who do not know, the Interlagos racetrack has actually been raced in all three seasons of CIL Formula Collegiate competition. Season 1, Season 2, and now here in Season 3. It has also been a prominent feature in the former G uh, GT3 offering, as well as this season's first ever offering of the Collegiate Prototype Challenge. As we are now going to get into qualifying, we're looking at Cohen Evans at IPU. He's coming up, turn five, heading down to turn six. The very technical, the turn six, turn seven, turn eight complex. Cohen Evans is looking to put a little bit of heat in his toes. He needs to get some form of a run going tonight. If he can get that done, we will definitely be seeing an excellent showing out of Cohen Evans. Amanda, I frequently like to look at when he's racing because he has such great car control and such great ability to be able to just simply handle most of what is going on when he is around the track. As we take a further look along here, taking He's going to flip it through and have an element of Cohen Evans. 
Kelvin Evans, he is coming down into turn one. He's going to do a quick switch back through the Sun S through turn two and into the long sweeping turn three. It is a left hand corner. Now down the rudder Aposta we go. He is full beans, full throttle. As he heads on down into Skeeter Delago, he heads into turn four, cuts it court. Uh, cuts it short, does not hit that curbing, doesn't want an off track, don't want a one X. Now he heads through turn four here. Now he's gonna head into the long sweeping uphill turn five complex. This is where very, very seasoned drivers can even make mistakes. Heading on the brakes here in the turn six. Here he comes down to gear two. You can see his gear shifts right there. He's coming through. Now this is where you gotta carry a lot of momentum. Switch back, switch four, switch back. He holds gear two, gets heavy on the gas there, a little bit of slippage, but he's gonna go back down to gear two again, hard on the curving, and he's gonna run right down here into Young Sao. Long sweeping left hand downhill corner, heavy on the brakes again. Using all that AstroTurf, a lot of curving. Up through the gears they go. Up through the hill comes Cohen Evans. You gotta keep it nice and tidy here. Very nice and tidy. Does he cut any of the pit lane? Yes, he will. He's gonna cut as much as he can. He's gonna get across the line. And it will be provisional pole for Cohen Evans. We can look through the current standings here. Let me take a look at my side data going on. Um, checking through, it looks like we have Cohen Evans on provisional pole, Lucas Moody in P2, Athena LeClaire in P3, uh, Thomas Toomey is now taking P4. Uh, we still have some heavy hitters that have yet to qualify. We've got, it looks like, R. Muhammad Alif, Jake Cummings, Clint Haltman, Jason Wallet, self-proclaimed titan of the sport. You know, several cars that often provide, you know, excellent laps. They have yet to complete theirs as we are mainly hunting through we're, we're looking for all avenues that are possible here we ride along with that looks to be alexander diamond he's running through that's the turn five complex up in a turn six heavy on the braking there he looks to take that corner nice and smooth nice and easy he's looking that right there look at that man hold that white line Man, oh man, does that look stable. And he's going to head into turn seven here, turn eight. And he's going to run right on down the sweeping long left-hander into Yun Sao, where he's going to use all that AstroTurf. Look at that man. Use all of that available ground. Use no curbing. He's got smooth asphalt on his hands. He is going to push the limit. He's going to take it up all the gears. Hold it firm. Sweep out for some momentum. Does he cut some track? Yes, he does. Does he hold it tight? Oh, that's very tight. Where does that lap land? P11, no gain for Alexander Diamond. Running along here with our namesake, it is Zachary Lindler. He's holding right now the P9. He cuts it by as much track as possible. That man's as tight as he is when he's ready to go. There he is. P8. I think that's a one position gain for the 37 car at Lenar Ryan University. Let's ride alongside our Formula Collegiate Series director. He's running down that long sweeping turn three as he heads now into the Renner Apostle. He's heading towards Skid and Lago. He's running the inside a little bit. Maybe he's, uh, he's, he's scrubbing. Is he scrubbing? I don't think he is going fast. Or if he was fast, I mean, he's still at full pace, it looks like. But he may be just, you know, taking a cool down lap, cooling down those tires, because he is definitely not on the aggressor, it looks like. But we're going to take a small little pause here to also introduce my broad, uh, my producer for the evening and my partial helper here, Mr. Matthew Nordberg. And uh, Mr. Nordberg, how are you doing this evening? He says his microphone is not on. We're going to get there in a second. Technical difficulties. But as we're looking through here, we have, it looks to be Jake Cum Jake Cummings. Jake Cummings in the 007, Mr. James Bond himself. He's running down the Red Apostle in Desquita de Lago. Here he comes through the corn. And he, he bobbles a little bit. That's why. That's a 1X. The lap will not count. He will not improve on his P4 positioning. Uh, some notable cars that have yet to qualify. Uh, Kale Davidson, Jordan Johnson, and R. Muhammad Ali. I'd say that, and I've been proven wrong, you feisty Nordberg, you. We have uh, Kale Davidson. Let's ride alongside with him. Oh. Well, 
We were riding along, so uh, Kale Davidson with the, with the high mom on the halo. Mom would not be pleased with that per, with that performance there, Mr. Davidson. As now we are looking alongside that looks to be Jordan Johnson. Uh, I believe that is Jordan Johnson, who is going to disappear. And that's because qualifying is over, ladies and gentlemen. And we are ready for the first heat race. 40 minutes, 20 laps. And we have a first-time pole sitter in the CIL. We are going to be sitting on the pole with Lucas Moody at a Ball State University. Running alongside Lucas Moody, we have P2 at Cohen Evans at an MPU. P3 is Hunter Hodeski at a Clemson University with P4. Jake comes out of Wingate. P5 is Athena LeClaire at a St. Clark College with P6, Ben Pure at Amaris. P7 is Bradley Skinker at a Ball State with P8, Thomas Toomey at a University of Virginia. With P9 being Zach Lindler out of Lenore Ryan. P10, Nicholas Patinella. P11, Aiken Lamar out of Howard Community College. P12, Andrew Williams out of Clemson. P13, Alexander Diamond out of Drexel. P14, Jason Wall out of Drexel. P15, Austin DeLong out of Pennsylvania College of Technology. P16, Taylor Klingensmith out of Robert Morris University. P17, Adrian Tuba Kobik out of St. Clair with P18, Mark Turek out of Pennsylvania College of Technology. P19, Alan Holland out of St. Clair. P20, Jordan Johnson out of Kent State. P21, R. Muhammad Leaf out of Ball State. P22, Clint Alderman out of UNC Charlotte. P23, Cale Davidson out of the Ball State. And P24, Andrew Burrow out of Clemson University. 24 colors on the grid. It's full. It's ready to roll. We're taking a great look here. That's our Lucas Moody. Look at those 24 absolutely mint. Super Formula cars. They are ready to rumble. We do not have looks like we do not have all cars gridded yet. We are waiting on final gridding. If we can get to final gridding, we will see these cars rev it up and get ready to race. I believe we've just seen the final car grid. The final car was Jordan Johnson. We are waiting on the revs. The ready. From the final heat one race of the Formula Collegiate Season 3, Lucas Moody with a great run down the center. One, two, one, many in three, five. Some cars are outside, other cars not. They're going to get through turn two, turn three. They're going to get through just okay. We're going to have side by side into the long sweeping turn three. On the minutes, Athena LeClaire and P4. Athena LeClaire chasing it. It looks like Jake Cummings at P3. Does she have anything for him? Yes, she does. It's all inside of the outside. She takes it outside, that's P3 for a little car, but she runs wide, and comes Jake Cummings, she's going to have to get the position back, here's Ben Fiore, and P6 at Marist College, with the Honda, beside and behind him is Zach Lundler, and P8, P9 looks like right now, no, P7, I'm sorry, P7 for Lenore right now, Zach Lindler. these cars have stayed relatively clean all across the field, I'm a little bit sad. We have the all-white ghost special out of Thomas Toomey, and then we have Andrew Williamson down there in P19, or is that P10? I believe I believe that is P10, sorry. Thomas Toomey out there in P11, but it looks like we have Titan of the Sport, Jason Wall behind him in P12. That's no position for a Titan. We have some smoke behind. Was there some smoke heading into Young Sal? We'll never know. Oh, it is Alexander Diamond. No, he spins. What a shame. We're back here up in P6 with Ben Fiore. It's a long, snaking line right now. As it looks like there's a car that jumped to the inside. Uh, it looks to be Bradley Skinker up there in P5. He jumped to the outside just slightly there. Now we're looking at Zach Lindler. Zach Lindler is currently in P7. He is enjoying a quite an excellent start to this race. Let's hope he can continue on. He's got Hunter Odesti behind him in P8. He is currently the second highest place alumni, with the highest place alumni being Jay Cummings in P3. Look at Glenn Alderman. He started the race all the way in the back, and he is moving himself up and through the field. He started 22nd. He's already up to P11. The man with a moment in a motion. The newest OWR driver is cutting through the field. So we take a look here through the turn six and seven complex here. Clint Haltman is on a mission. He has cut through half the field already with half the field to go. One thing that you have to note, though, is that Jordan Johnson and Arma Ahmed Alif are still sitting back there in P21 and P22. And I believe there's smoke. It's Johnson. Johnson. What did he say? 
screen. Kale Davidson has spun out and is sitting back there, P9. Meanwhile, we've got Jake Cummings in P3. He is attempting to attack Cohen Evans. He just set the fastest lap at a race, you sly dog. By the way, this is Jay Cummings' last Formula Collegiate race for Wingate University as a man is transitioning to a master's degree at Converse College. Congratulations to Mr. Cummings on getting into Converse, in Converse College for a master's degree, and we will, we will fortunately get to see you race in the student category next season. We're looking once again at Ben Fiore. He's my favorite guy to go to. This Ben Fiore guy, let me tell you what, he, he just knows how to get it done. He's a midfield upper midfield driver always fighting with grace and with excellence as we're looking at him now we're going to take a ride on the roll hoop he's in p6 right now trying to sniff down that diffuser of athena leclerc in p5 and bradley skinker in p4 then fiore's going to ride down here in a long sweeping left hand corner before he heads into young south doesn't take a lot of the astroturf that's okay takes too much curvy for my liking but here he comes up the hill he will not use overtake he doesn't need to yet He's going to look to see what he can do, pushing up the hill as much as possible. He is coming through, cutting a lot of that, you know, that pitch straight there. You can do that in this track. He gets through the start-finish line and heavy on the brakes down to turn one in the center S. So we look through here. I'm looking for close battles. I'm looking for it. Right now, I see a close battle forming for P12 with Alan Hong, Jason Wallet, and what looks to be Zach Lindler. Zach Lindler has not had a good, you know, second part to the start of this race. And there's Alexander Diamond. He's fighting through. Zach Lindler back there in P14. He's doing okay now, but he was in round P7. I think he may have had a little slight spin somewhere, but that's typical for Spindler. As he comes through the curving, he's pushing hard with excellence. He may be looking for a pass because that's Alan Hong ahead. He should be able to pass Alan Hong, shouldn't he? Not this time, though. Alan Hong with a great defense. He just simply has a little bit too much gap right now for him. Here comes Alexander Diamond. I believe it is on Andrew Burrow. This is for P11. This is for the place outside of the reverse grid pole. As Alexander Diamond, as you look to the inside, look to the outside. No, he does not. He's going to said he's going to set the file behind. Start sniffing that diffuser. Get some extra air. And he's going to take it back up the next set of corners. He's looking to dive. He walks it up a little bit. No flat spot. Those tires too much there, Mr. Diamond. We don't want you to spin out. But we got P11 right here. It's Andrew Burrow. Andrew Burrow has been an upper midfield, but not quite point scoring driver this season. He is a spin. He's a tight spin. He's a tight spin. He's playing grass. I didn't know where in the world. He's coming right back out there to the asphalt. Now we got Clint Haltham in the PA. He is still enjoying his push up the field. He's got fellow friend and competitor and teammate of Orange Row Racing, Andrew Williams, out of MMP7. Andrew Williams is enjoying a return to the, to the CIO Formula Collegiate on a part time schedule. And he's enjoying his run right now up there in P7, of course. We look through the field again. I'm, I'm looking for a close battle, I'm, and it sounds like we have a little bit of we have a little bit of a radio message. Alan Hawking has had contact. I believe it must have been with Zach Lindler. He's the only one close by. No, he's like side by side in the paper. No, let's get it. Get to the end zone. Zach Lindler. Zach Lindler. Take it to the outside. Here comes Kale. Kale takes the position. Here comes Thomas Toby. He's to the side. To he takes it! No, he won't! Here comes Zach Lindler! They're still side, side by side! To me now in the marbles! Zach Lindler gonna get a little bit back into the gas! He's got the lead again! Oh, and that's the next switch back! And Lindler does not keep the position! He's back down in the P15! Thomas Toomey in the white ghost there. He is moving up through the field using a lot of AstroTurf there, but using no curving! Good show, sir! Now I'm looking through the field again. I'm trying to find something to look at. Here comes Alexander Diamond. He's going to drive race first life with Andrew Burrow. He's going to cut the corner. Andrew Burrow's going to look for the switchback. He's going to look for the switchback. He may. He may not. He has done it inside. No, he sold him a dummy, but it did not work. As Alexander Diamond, his mind is like a diamond. Hard and sharp. He's going to take that P3, P11 away from Andrew Burrow and set his sights on P10, which is Tyler Smith. Now we're back into the battle with Jake Cummings and Cohen Evans in P2 and P3 right now with it looks to be a gap of about six tenths of a second. Jake Cummings 
he has the alumni win right now intact, considering the fact the nearest alumni is Drew Williams in P7, which is 10 seconds behind. But Jay Cummings is more of a man than that. He doesn't just simply want the alumni win. He would like the actual win that comes along with this. And because of that, he is going to fight tooth and nail to try and take it. He is going to sniff up some diffuser air. We are already on lap 7 of this race. These cars are blistering through, running lap times of around 1 minute 16 seconds. At least that's what the leader did this last time by. If we look through the field again, I mean, that may be the closest battle we have right now, unless we look at the battle for P5, because Benjamin Fiore just took it away from Athena Leclerc. They're side by side, and that is a puzzle skin Athena Leclerc takes it! She gets to keep that position. She kept it legal. That is good for her. But Ben Fiore, he may be a little bit pissed off. He may want that position back. We're going to ride alongside here just a little bit here with Ben Fiore. Let's get on that roll hoop. I like to see some action. Here we go. He's coming through this little switchback here to 6, 7, 8 complex. He is looking to try to keep it together. Now, a big problem here with these cars, they generate a lot of outwash, a lot of downforce, but a lot of wake. And that means following in these cars is incredibly difficult, especially in tracks like this, where there's a lot of corners to deal with. Ben Fiore has to deal with a lot of understeer, but he's handling it excellently. He has to use a little bit of outside curving, but that is okay. We will handle that accordingly. Here comes Ben Fiore up the hill. He is getting that toe. I do not believe he's using his overtake right now. And he's going to just snake along and snake along and take that air and hold firm. Good show, sir. A little bit of report here on our cars that are out of the race. We have Arn Muhammad Alif and Jordan Johnson who are out of the race. And... Adrian Tubakovic and Austin DeLong are also out of the race. I have just been given a report. Uh, it looks to be that R. Muhammad Ali is out on track again. He is just three laps down, which is interesting to say the least. I am looking for a little bit of radio transmission here. And we have a radio transmission from Austin DeLong, a leaf on a five kill streak. Whatever that means, it probably means he used a plow, which is my patent product. But here we go, it's Jay Cummings. He is battling alongside Cohen Evans. This is the most entertaining battle we have right now. Will Jay Cummings use overtake? Let's ride along on his roll hoop. Maybe then we can see exactly what the man is thinking as he rides on through here. It doesn't look like he's using overtake right now. He's pushing well up and through by Cohen Evans was using overtake there. You could see it on the light bulb. He used overtake for defense. Good show, sir, but is giving Lucas Moody this victory right now because he's starting to pull away. I would get a little bit creative, but now we're going to take alongside. I believe that is, that is a car without a rear wing. Let's take a look at and see exactly who that is. He is ahead of Lucas Moody. On, uh, now he's letting Lucas Moody go. I believe that is Nicholas Patinella who's going one lap down. Um, Patinella is now off the track again. Um, sir, um, you need that thing. Meanwhile, I was caught napping because we have a side-by-side -side battle with Jay Cummings and Cohen Evans. Jay Cummings to the inside. He takes the inside pass, and that is P2 for Jay Cummings. He's been released. What can Cohen Evans do? Can he attack? Can he get it back? What will he do here? Takes a lot of astroturf. No curbing. Excellent move there. Get the power down and get up the hill. Get up there, sir. Takes a wide corner angle there. Not really excellent, but he cuts it deep, cuts it thin. Now we're going to take a look back at Thomas Toomey for some reason. He's back there in P12 right now. He is in a battle with what looks to be Andrew Burrow. These are teammates, by the way, at Orangeville Racing as well. We do not want any inter-team squabbling going on. As our Muhammad Ali, he may be three laps down, but he just set the fastest lap of the race, by the way. No big deal. 
But here comes Thomas Toomey. He's at the outside of Andrew Burrow. It looks like Andrew Burrow is letting him go. It is a team decision. An excellent showing for a man with a little bit more pace. Meanwhile, back here in P6 and P5, it's Ben Fiore and Athena LeClaire. Athena LeClaire went to the outside a little bit too much for my liking. As Nicholas Patinella is still out on the track with no rear wing, sir, get some repairs. We have Ben Fiore up here in P6. What is he going to do? He almost had P5 back again. This has been an excellent and entertaining battle for him tonight at Ameris College. And we'll just like to see how this can continue, considering the fact that when it's all said and done for the second race, he'll be in P5 if he finishes in P6 right now. Looking through the field, trying to find a fight. Uh, looks like Kale Davidson and Tyler Klingensmith in P13 and P14. They are relatively close together. But Ben Fiore, let's right alongside him here. He's got what looks to be, that is, that's a leaf. That's our Muhammad Leaf. He is passing him. A man, he may be three laps down, but good Lord, he is going to do everything he can to try to get a lap back the hard way, it seems like. I mean, good show for him. Now we're taking a look alongside Cohen Evans. He is in P3, being uh, chasing down P2's Jake Cummings. I mean, this could be an entertaining battle here, but Cohen Evans, he is charging up overtake, so he has used some already. My best guess would be he just used some going up the hill, and now he's down in the valley in the switchbacks. Jake Cummings is really good in this section. He's been really good at holding that inside line of the white. And getting right back out with all the power down that he can, right back out to the curbing. He's doing an excellent job out there, and he's just maintaining position. Now, the gap to Cohen, the gap to Jake, to Lucas Moody for Jake Cummings is 2.4 seconds. For a reference, last time by, uh, Lucas Moody did a 116.6, Jake Cummings did a 116.8, and Cohen Evans, he did a 117 flat. So, Right now, Lucas Moody is about two-tenths of a second faster than our P2 and four-tenths of a second faster than our P3 cars. Now we're looking through the field here. I'm looking here for a good battle, anything close by even. And I believe I have found one here in P12 and P13. It looks like Andrew Burrell versus Kale Davidson. Um, That's Mark Turek in P16. Here's Kale Davidson. He's already passed him. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's a, but here comes Burrow, he's looking to the outside, look back to the inside, dive it deep, no! And there's Cale Davidson, Mrs. Davidson would be proud, as I believe as Thomas Toomey just passing Alexander Diamond, that is to take P10 to where Thomas Toomey is now sitting in the provisional pole for race two, but Alexander Diamond wants it back, <clears throat> he gets to the outside, but he goes too wide, and wrong. Thomas Toomey takes the position. He's going to get to keep it for now. But Diamond is not said and done. And we also have Kale Davidson here. He would like P10, but Thomas Toomey is calm. He's cool. He's collected. The man knows how to get it done. He knows how to position himself for the second race. The man qualified in P8, so he does. he's not lacking for pace. He just simply... Wanted to run the midfield race, wanted to get himself acclimated and acclaimed. Our Muhammad Leaf has once again set another fastest lap. The man cannot be beat. But here we come, up the hill now. We got Nicholas Patinelli who's going to give Thomas Timmy a little bit of a wake, actually a little bit of a toe. Timmy to the outside. Here comes Diamond. Will Diamond chase him? Diamond is, but he is charging overtake. He doesn't have all the horsepower in the world for that engine right now. But he dives it deep. Oh my goodness gracious, Jason. What on earth? Brakes, sir! Use your brakes! But Thomas Toomey maintains the position. If I was him, if I had rear mirrors, Cole Brown moment right there. And here comes Alexander Diamond. He's looking at the inside. Does he dive it deep? He does. He hits a lot of curvy. Thomas Toomey has to go to the outside. He had to go wide to protect the position. That's not a good look if I'm Thomas Toomey. But Alexander Diamond... I mean, the man sent it in there, stuck it well in the inside. I mean, both of them went off the track, but I mean, they're both still running. Here comes Cale Davidson. Now, Cale Davidson has simply had enough. It's time to dispatch the man. And here he is doing exact, not that yet. I thought I was going to say he's doing exactly that. That's simply not the case just yet. 
Alexander Diamond is going to hold on to this position for right now. But let's ride on Kale's roll loop because one, I want to say hi to Mrs. Davidson, and two, I want to see the man pass him from the best perspective. Here he comes. He is using the overtake. He turned it on. Not the 30 horsepower. To the outside. Side from the side. Side pod to side pod. Does he have it? And Diamond fights back there side by side. Diamond took it. Diamond slides. Diamond slid. I think there was contact. Because it looked like there was wing to the fuser contact. But it does not. Diamond goes wide again. That position for Andrew Burrell. But Davidson gets it done. Wow! Now I'm being told we are hunting down a replay of this. We get down into turn one. Diamond takes it back and... Oh, difficult to tell. Difficult situations. My best guess, being unbiased here, Diamond got a little bit squirrely trying to get the power back down and slid in front of Davidson's nose. There is no intentional contact. Still sitting at P13 for Alexander Diamond. The race is not lost. He is sitting ahead of Tyler Klingensmith. Ben Fiore, by the way, what a man. He is up into, well, he's actually down. He's down to P7. Uh, looks like Clint Haldeman has passed him. Clint Haldeman already up to P6. The man is on a mission. He's gone from P22 to P6 in, this, in one race. I mean, the man did a 116.5 last time by Lucas Moody, did a 116.5. He's doing the exact same lap times as the leader. If I am Clint Altman, the race can be won. He, he just has to really get it going because we've got five laps left and 13 seconds to make up, sir. But we can get some more positions here. Because now we're going to take a look. So he's going to start battling Athena LeClaire. Athena LeClaire is being held up slightly by Bradley Skinker. You can see it there. The wash is there. The track is there. Clint Haldeman takes too much Kirby from my leg. Oh, he turned it on. He's going to turn it on. He's going to take 930 horsepower running through that turbo cylinder in line four. Here he comes. He's snipping it down, getting some drag to the outside. Side by side, side. Side pod, the side pod, Clint Holderman, stick it, stick it, stick it, does he have it, yes he does, there, there he comes, now they're side by side through turn three, he does not have overtake turned on, I think Leclerc is going to take that inside line and take it back, but here is Clint Holderman, now he's going to sniff at the fuser, he looks at the inside, does he dive it deep, does he take it, does he stick it, no he does not. I think it looks like it's a little bit wide, but that's okay. It's for defense. Here comes Clint Alderman. We're going to ride along with him now. He's in P6. This is the most entertaining thing on the track right now, folks. He is looking through. He's hitting those curves. He is fighting hard right now. Looking intense. I think it looks like a mistake. She locks it up. Clint Holderman tries to take advantage, but has to put the car to the outside. That's a poor move. I think Leclerc tries to defend the inside. Can't do it for long. I think Leclerc uses the outside there to her advantage. Excellent racing there. Holterman playing with all fairness given. All space given with Clint Holterman. Right alongside the suspension mount of a King Leclerc Super Formula chassis. So you see now Clint Holterman is going to, you know, use some of that draft. Athena LeClaire is using overtake right now in a defensive maneuver, but Clint Haltman's right there. She did no weaving of the sort. She just basically used overtake to toe. Uh, I mean, Clint Haltman's going to say thank you very much, but now he has to run to the outside. That's a poor turn one, turn two, send that complex there for Athena LeClaire. Now we have a drag race down to Skid and Alago. Here comes Clint Haltman. Does he have it to the outside? Does he stick it? Will he stick it? Does he stick it? To the outside! He has it. That is P5 for Clint Haldeman, the man who started this race, P22. Looking through, looking through the field now, I'm being told that we're going to get a replay on that, which is excellent. Absolutely excellent. As now, let's take a look at exactly what happened here. We're riding alongside Clint Haldeman. He is now in P5, but he was in P6 at this point. They are drag racing, drag racing, drag racing, and he just simply lost to the late breakers. Gave Athena LeClaire plenty of room. Plenty of room given. Plenty of position gained for Clint Ultiman. An excellent run there for him, sir. 
as we're on lap 18 now with three laps to go looking through the field this is right now probably the closest battle that we have with Clint Alderman on defensive measures now whether they actually know that was a replay sorry that was a replay now we're looking at Clint Haltman here with three laps to go he has pushed through now and I am struggling to see who the, who's up there in P4. I believe that's Bradley Skinker. I mean, if Haltman could steal another position, that would be great. But we're talking, you know, fantasy land here. But watching Ben Fiore now, he is in P7. He's going to go and collect some solid points. I'm worried about P10 right now because it looks to be Thomas Toomey, who is eight seconds behind Andrew Williams in P9. So Thomas Toomey is looking solid for reverse grid pole, starting alongside Andrew Williams, who's starting behind him, will be Hunter Hadesti, who's in P8 right now. That would be an OWR 1-2-3 to begin the last race of Season 3 of Formula Collegiate Action. Looking through the field now, we are down to two to go. Lucas Moody has led every single lap of this race, but Jake Cummings, he has done a little bit of effort there. He put a 116.3 on the last time by. He has gained two tenths on Lucas Moody. I think Lucas Moody right now is more on autopilot mode, just trying to get through, as now we're looking at Clint Haltman. The pass on Bradley Skinker is within reason now. He has somehow found a way to sneak his way up in the P4. It's an excellent show, sir, for him. We're riding alongside Bradley Skinker here. We've got the face cam rolling with him. Uh, Bradley Skinker, you know, he's been a upper front car driver, been around a sixth to third place car all season long. His main competitors have been, you know, the guys who are usually winning, like, you know, an R. Muhammad Ali, a Lucas Moody. Uh, even a Kale, da a Kale, actually more of a Kale Davidson and a Lucas Moody. The Bradley Skinker, under the tutelage of such excellent ball state drivers and the great wall of ball, has found ways to be extremely competitive. Now we're going to ride alongside Clint Haltman here. We got the face cam on him. Let's ride on that roll hoop. It is coming into the final lap, but they will have one more lap of competition to go. He has the overtake on 930 horsepower. I believe he's going to run that overtake till he runs out. Lucas Moody is well on his way to winning this race unless Jake Cummins can do something that's 1.3 seconds away. Here comes Clint Haltman down to turn three, blocking his Bradley Skinker. Bradley Skinker is going to say, I dare you to go to the outside. Do it like this. They're both on overtake. They both go too wide. Jake, there's contact. There's contact. Bradley Skinker bulldozes Clint Haltman out of the way. An absolute travesty of excellent racing that was on hand. The wheel, the wheel combat. Clint Haltman, though, he is angry. He knows he could have had that position there, but he wants it the hard way. He is fighting with tooth and nail to try and get it. Meanwhile, Jake Cummings has got it down to nine tenths of a second. The win is going to go to Lucas Moody. He's led 20 straight laps. But we're going to ride alongside with Clint Haltman. He's running out of overtake. He's going to have to get up the hill. Here he comes. Does he have enough to drag race up the hill? He has. He has enough. Will he get? He took the inside. He got Bradley Skinker. He had to defend the outside like that. They sold the dummy. Here comes Clint Haltman. Did he get it? Yes, he did. Clint Haltman by three. Hundreds of a second takes P4. The man went plus 18 positions from 22nd to 4th. Lucas Moody, uh, I am checking my record here. I could be correct. I could be incorrect, but I do firmly believe that Lucas Moody has just won his first race in CIL history which for him to have won the sprint race one is an excellent race for him. He started on pole, he led all 20 laps, and he comes away with the victory. An excellent showing for Lucas Moody. He beats Jake Cummings by eight tenths of a second. He's gonna burn it down here, boys. He's gonna light up those, I believe they're hard vans. He's gonna light up that rubber. 
he's just putting it down, laying it down. He's adjusting his camera. But what a man in a moment in a motion. So we'll take a look through our results here from race one. Lucas Moody out of Ball State University with the Wayman J. Cummings out of Wingate University with P2 and the alumni victory. Cohen Evans out of Ipiyui with a P3 finish with Clint Halterman out of UNC Charlotte with a P4. Bradley Skinker out of All State with a P5. With Athena LeClaire out of St. Clair College with a P6. Benjamin Fiore, P7. Hunter Hedesti, P8. Andrew Williams, P9. Thomas Toomey at the University of Virginia will have reverse grid pole after finishing in 10th position. In P11, we have Cale Davidson with P12, Andrew Burrow, P13, Tyler Kling Smith out of Robert Morris University with P14, Alexander Diamond out of Drexel. P15 is Aiken Lamar with P16, Jason Walton. P17, the namesake of this race, Zachary Lindler with P18, Nicholas Patnella, P19, R. Muhammad Leaf, P20, Mark Turek, P21, Alan Hong, P-22, Jordan Johnson, P-23, Adrian Tubakovic, and P-24, Austin DeLong. Meanwhile, while we have some time, we are going to pull in to the interview waiting to our interview room. The winner of race one... Mr. Lucas Moody. Mr. Moody. Um, correct me if I am wrong. I called it on the broadcast. This is your first CIL victory. Yes, sir, it is. I'm so happy. Uh, good, good, good. Um, fairly uncontested till the very end. Um, 20 laps led. Pole and the win. Um... How did you manage the race? Yeah, the race was hard. I know how much pace Cohen and Jake had, so I didn't know if I was going to use all my overtake at once, if I wanted to spread it out on the laps. Uh, usually I would just use it very a little bit, like periodically throughout the race, and then use the rest of it on the last lap. But there's so much oversteer around this track and these temps that I was scared I'd spin it if I did that. So I was out of overtake like halfway through the last lap. Interesting, interesting indeed. Well, you have won, which means we give you the grand prize of the P10 starting place in, in race two. Uh, so talk me through managing that, because so far tonight, all you have experienced is that coveted first grid slot. Yeah, the racing is going to be fun. I'm just going to play it slow, uh, be really uh, conservative on the restart in the first lap, and just uh, hope that I can just work my way slowly through the field. Uh, I do want to add one more thing. Uh, Nick, I don't know if you remember this, but my first ever CIO podium was Brazil with you uh, with you casting. So I guess this track and caster combo is just good luck for me. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who knows? All I know is is that you won this race tonight, and you are now starting in P10. I wish you the best of luck, sir. You have an excellent challenge ahead of you, considering the fact that the two cars that were hounding down your diffuser are starting right ahead of you, sir. Good luck, and maybe we'll have a conversation in race two. Yep, thank you, guys. We'll hope so. And that was Lucas Moody out of Ball State University. 20 laps down, 20 laps to go. It has been an excellent start to the Thank You Zach Lindler Grand Prix. The only thing that I can say about race one was relatively clean. I mean, not a lot of wrecks, not a lot of action. Um... I would be lying if I said I expect that for race two because it is now time for the last 20 laps of season three Formula Collegiate competition. Now, it is more well said than done that pretty much every championship that we have is done and dusted. Uh, our Muhammad Leaf is our world champion for season three as he was our world champion in season one and season two. And... As far as the other four championships go, they have been well done and collected way before we could even consider the, consider the following. But we have 
done as much as we can for the first race. Looking forward to race two. I didn't make a prediction for race one. I didn't really know it to make a prediction for race one, but I'm going to make a prediction for race two. And I'll call it like I see it. I believe the winner is starting on the pole. Give me Thomas Toomey. I think he gets it done. We'll roll through the grid. Thomas Toomey out of the University of Virginia. He is on the pole with, I believe it is Andrew Williams there in P2. P3 is Hunter Redesti, P4 Benjamin Fiore, P5 Ethan Leclerc, P6 Bradley Skinger, P7 Clint Haldeman, P8 Cohen Evans, P9 Jake Cummings, P10 Lucas Moody. That is how they grid the rest grid where I told you they finished after race one. We're taking a look at it live. We've got all, I believe now, almost every car is on the grid. We have red engines. We have lights. And it's go, 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 go for the last 20 laps of season three. Say how competition. Here comes the old Thomas to be on a porn star. That's funny. That's the intensity. He takes an excellent start. The man is through today. He's one and two. He is leading a CIO race for the first time in his career. An excellent start for a hunter and Dusty. Where did he come from? Starting from P3, an excellent roll for him. As Andrew Williams is now in P2, he is defending, I believe, as Athena Leclerc in P3. We're looking at Clint Haltman in P7. There is Andrew Williams, he is in P2. He gets a little bit bargy there with Athena Leclerc. Thomas Toomey says, thank you, sir. He is now up in the P3, now to P2. It's side by side, but Andrew Williams trying to hold it clean. Athena Leclerc wants to get involved here. Maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. They're side by side. They're going to head in the next corner for Thomas Toomey's at the inside. Sam LeClaire is going to take a lot of momentum there. He's going to try to shift it back. Running through the long, sweeping left-hander. Does he have it? Does he not? Using a lot of AstroTurf there. Athena LeClaire tries to get it. Can't sneak it by. Here comes Thomas Toomey. Who is he? Who is he going to get a push? I don't know. And Ben Fiore gave him a... A thin up, it looks like Ben Fiore gave him the push. Ben Fiore now has to get behind. He dives into the inside of Athena Leclerc. Does it get at the stick? Athena Leclerc has to go to the outside. Athena Leclerc now has to take some curbing. And Jake Cummings has a radio message for somebody. It looks like he may have been hit somewhere. But never matter. Look at what we've got going on here. Very tough and tight driving. So I'm going to take a qu quick gander here. It looks like Diamond is out, and Cummings is out. Cummings has damage. The car that finished second in race one, he's out in race two. And that is a sad, sad turn of events. Thomas Toomey fighting Noah Clan Alderman, two OWR teammates. What will they do? Fair blows given right now. They're side by side with tight, intense racing. That's Lucas Moody, and looks to be that is... Lucas Moody dies to the inside. He and Thomas Toomey have history. This is going to be a very intense battle. These drivers do not like each other. To quote the great Thomas Toomey, I just don't think he's a good race car driver. But here comes Lucas Moody. Now he is going to sniff that diffuser. He's going to have to take a look at the outside. That's going to be Toomey's game. He's going to force him to take it the long way around. Here comes Lucas Moody. Is he using overtake early? Side pod to side pod. Does he have it? And Moody does. But enough great breaking there from Lucas Moody. He has passed Thomas Toomey. But never matter. We have Thomas. We have Jordan Johnson back there in P7. Now he's going to try to pass Thomas Toomey. Toomey is falling down like a rock. And there's Cale Davidson behind. It looks like Bradley Skinker running through the field here. Cohen Evans in P9, it's Bradley Skinker up there in P10. He finished race one, I believe that Skinker. He finished race one in P5. So P10, a double points day for both races. An excellent showing for him. 
I want to turn our attention back to the leaders. I don't usually like to focus on the leaders a lot, but when you have a leader like Hunter Hadesti, who's been running in this league now since the very beginning of CIL Formula Collegiate, he has always been close but no cigar to even leading a lap. The man took the lead with authority to start this race. And now he holds P1. He's using some overtake there. He has a blocker in the form of Andrew Williams. And in Clint Halterman down there in P3, he's battling with Ben Fiore. This could be an OWR sweep of the podium, which would be an absolutely fantastic day for that team. We have Ben Fiore up there in P4. Now he's going to get down to the nitty-gritty. He's going to do a little bit of weaving there with Clint Halterman. Doesn't really have it that time by. That's okay. He's going to settle in for P4. Now try to recollect yourself there because you've got a very hounding Lucas Moody. The man tasted victory once. He wants it again. He dives it very deep there to begin that uphill complex. But now he's going to get through this left right hander. Jordan Johnson is right there sniffing it down. The man. I mean, he had to start P22. I mean, Holtzman started P22, and he finished P4. And then you've got here, um, he starts P22 for this race. He's already up to P6, and we're only talking lap 4 of 20. There's still 16 laps to go of this event as Hunter Hadesti is looking to cross the line to take it to the fifth lap of this race. He's got Andrew Williams behind and Clint Halterman in third with Lucas Moody in fourth, eight tenths of a second behind. The battle now is Thomas Toomey. He has battled it back to ninth. He is fighting alongside Cohen Evans. He has taken the place away from Cohen Evans. That is P8 for him, sir. An excellent showing. P9, Cohen Evans. He has, that is R. Muhammad Ali. R. Muhammad Ali. He finished three laps down last race. He's already up in the P9 as well. He's got some ground to make up if he wants to take over Jordan Johnson, who's currently sitting in P6, who's having to deal with the fact that Ben Fiore is a hard car to pass in P6. Actually, sorry, Jordan Johnson actually just passed him. Now he has to pass the race one winner in the form of Lucas Moody. There's some locking up there from Thomas Toomey. The car gets a little bit squirrely in the rear, but it is okay. He holds firm. Here is R. Muhammad Ali out of the 12 car to Singaporean Slinger. He's up into P8 now. He's going to take a look around the outside. A great push there from him using a lot of that AstroTurf. Using all of that AstroTurf. He pulls it out to the outside as he's a lot of that curving there. He got on the power on the curving but it did not matter. Arm on the leap. He's using that overtake, using all 930 horsepower. Here comes Cohen Evans. Cohen Evans sweeping to the inside. Cohen Evans now. He wants the position. Arm on the leap is now on defense. Here comes Cohen Evans. No! Arm on the leap's going to outbreak him into that corner and keep that position. Meanwhile, the battle for second. Clint Altman has just passed Andrew Williams. Andrew Williams is now holding third. He's got a hounding Lucas Moody behind him in P4. He takes a little bit of extra curving there for his liking. In fact, went off the track slightly. But here he comes. He is, remember, a part-time racer in this series. Does not drive this track very often. In fact, shares a paint scheme with myself when I drive. But, you know, here he comes running through these corners here. I mean, it's an excellent showing for a man who qualified P12, finished ninth, started this race in second because of the invert, and now is holding on the P3 and a potential podium position six laps into this race. But, well, ladies and gentlemen, I know my initial pick to begin this race was Thomas Toomey. I apologize for the misinformation. My pick should have been Hunter Hedesti. The man is pulling away from the field. And he's getting a huge favor right now for the fact that the biggest hound dog in the field of Lucas Moody is right now side by side with Andrew Williams, who has to out try to outbreak him into turn one. Williams holds firm with the defense, and Moody, Moody hits him. Moody hits Andrew Williams. No, no, no. We're supposed to have good racing, not contact. The shame is there for Lucas Moody, who's going to run it straight into the wall. His race is over. His season is over. We need to get a replay out of that because that looked to be incredibly intense there. And by that point, we have contact. 
Uh, but see if we can get a little bit of a further replay going here. Uh, that's on Muhammad Leaf right there. If we could get a different angle. Here's Lucas Moody, and I mean, if I could get him from Andrew Williams' angle, maybe there'd be a little bit of a different... That is incredibly hard to tell. Well, from that angle, it's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, yes, Drew had the opportunity to give more space, but also Lucas kind of forced the issue to take space. Ultimately, if I was a steward, that's more of a racing incident. Both cars didn't want to give an inch. And I said Hunter Odesti was pulling away. I was lying. Here comes Clint Altman. He's going to look to the outside here. Now, both of you need to understand there's a hound dog in the lead. Oh, a hound dog in third, more likely. His name is Jordan Johnson. He is going to do everything in his power to try and go ahead and take that win. He started in P22. It's almost a last to first challenge, but not fully. But man, oh man, that would be something to watch. As we got Clint Altman here, he's in P2. If I am him right now, if I do not have the pace to beat Hunter, if I am the Orange Real Racing team right now, I am thinking more of the long lines of it's time to run flanker. We need a blocker against Jordan Johnson. And both of those cars are cutting through the field with Grace and with Glory. And here comes Armahan Leaf. He's in P5 right now. He's using all the overtake he can because he needs to pass Ben Fiore. It is hard to say this right now, but I'm saying it true. Our Muhammad Leaf is the lead Ball State car who's only in fourth place. Meanwhile, we just missed a pass for the lead, and I apologize. Clint Halterman has the lead of this race. The decision was made that Halterman had more pace. But here is Hunter Odesti. He's just finished leading the first eight, I believe, nine laps of his CIL career. We're on lap nine of 20, so he led eight laps. Now he has... Now he has to defend Jordan Johnson. We're going to get a replay of his pass here. It was Hunter Odesti who leaves the inside just a little bit too open. Tried to hang it on the outside to see if he could outbreak him. They both used some overtake, but Clint Haltman in the end, he just had too much. And he took the lead, and now he is trying to drive away. But Hunter Odesti is now side by side with Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson now has to file back onto the inside. Now he has to look, think about what he's going to do. Doesn't take any curbing. Doesn't take any outside curbing. Has full smooth asphalt to do this move. Will he go to the inside? Hunter leaves it open. I mean, it could be calculated by the fact that Hunter knows that simply Jordan Johnson is too fast. He's going to take this position with ease. Jordan Johnson to P2. And if I am Clint Altman, that's my worst nightmare because the fastest car on the track just took second and is hunting you down, sir. A hard, a hard image to get through. But Hunter Odesti says, no, sir. I want a chance. He dives to the inside, doesn't have it. Here's Thomas Toomey fighting Bradley Skinker. This is for P7. Toomey dives to the inside, uses a little bit of barging maneuver. It doesn't matter. He took it. He has it. He's currently using that overtake right now. That's probably why. Using that overtake gave him all that extra horsepower. He made the move necessary to go out there and take it. Meanwhile, back in the lead is Clint Altman. He is seven tenths of a second ahead of Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson can taste that diffuser. He started this race P22. Not really knowing what he was going to be able to do. He cut through the field with ease. He cut it like a hot knife through butter. And now he is on the prowl and on the hunt. We start lap 11 of the second race of this Grand Prix. We don't know what he is going to do. We now have a live view of Jordan Johnson. He is, by the way, the Thursday league, the Collegiate Prototype Challenge. He is the champion of that series. But in this series here, he only part-timed it. He's not the champion. But he's going to do everything in his power to just get one last hoorah, give himself one last little victory here. 
But he's now sniffing him down, hunting him down. What does he have for him? He's only two tenths of a second behind the man. He has to think about this move, has to think about this calculator, has to think about this in quality measures. Because we also have our Muhammad Ali. He is catching. Right now, with every single moment that Jordan Johnson spends calculating a move, we have our Muhammad Ali, who already knows what move he's going to make, because right now he's hunting down Hunter Hedesti. We're right now looking side by side views Haltman versus Johnson. Both drivers with gloves on, both drivers with incredible poise and incredible focus. Haltman is using the overtake. He is using the overtake, but not weaving. He's essentially giving a super powered toe. Will he weave? No, he won't. He finishes using his overtake for the slap. Now he has to charge because it's going to take 90 seconds. It's going to be at least a lap and some change before he can use it again. Here comes Jordan Johnson. Sitting in second, the weave fest has begun. Remember, there is a couple moves you can make. Does Johnson make the move here? No, he does not. Arna Muhammad Leaf is behind. Did he just make the move? I believe he did because the position changed hands. Hunter Hadesti has lost P P3. He lost P3 to Arna Muhammad Leaf, who's now sitting there in P4. Meanwhile, Jordan Johnson. You better watch out because this is actually going to get entertaining here. If Clint Haltman can hold off Jordan Johnson, we're going to start to have a conversation about the fact that our Muhammad Ali is going to try to pass Jordan Johnson. And when he's going to try to pass Jordan Johnson, he's also going to have to worry about Clint Haltman. If I'm Clint Haltman, I would just try to hold on. But never mind, Jordan Johnson has just turned off the overtake. He has all 930 horsepower. But this time, Clint Haltman says, I will fight you, sir. To the outside, Johnson has more horsepower. He will take the lead of the race with certainty. Here comes Jordan Johnson now. He's up in the P1. He's got the cleanest air on the track. He can get away from Clint Haltman, who has enjoyed leading a small portion of this race. But now we're on lap 13, and we're going to have to consider mo man in moments of motion right now with Clint Haltman. Sitting in a calm and comfortable P2 position. Armand Leaf sits in P3. He will be the next man up to try and tackle Clint Haltman, but Clint Haltman is going to do everything in his power to hold on to this third place and give himself a podium in the final race of the season. As we have a radio message from our director, Zach Lindler, that was a Code Brown moment. I believe that was in retrospect to battling Mark Turek for P-17. Nevertheless, running up through the hill we go. It's our Muhammad Ali. He has the overtake on all 930 horsepower. He is going to go to the outside of Clint Haltman. He has all the power in his hands. He has completed the pass before turn one. That's our Muhammad Ali in the P-2. And now the setting has been made. We have seven laps of racing to go, and we have two of the most talented road racing experts the CIL has ever seen. And they are sitting in P1 and P2 right now with Jordan Johnson and R. Muhammad Ali. This battle is going to be excellent. We can't wait to watch it with you. Meanwhile, Ben Fiore, he is sitting down there in P6. He is looking all over that diffuser of Cohen Evans, trying to consider his moves. He, doesn't have a, he has overtake available, but he's not choosing not to use it right now. That's an excellent choice considering where they are on the track. They're getting ready for the side shift twisting turns here of six, seven, and in a meanwhile, Aiken Lamar in P12. He's fighting against, it looks to be Andrew Burrow, who Andrew Burrow in P11 is looking to try and hold on to that position. It looks like there's a little bit of locking up there. I believe it was an Aiken Lamar lock up because Andrew Burrow has gotten away even better than he was before. But my goodness gracious me, here we look at it. There's Tyler Klingensmith down there in P13. He's doing okay right now for himself out of Robert Morris University. In P14 right there, that is Austin DeLong. Meanwhile, back at the lead where the real action's going on, we have got our Muhammad Ali, who is chasing down Jordan Johnson. For lap time reference, 
Jordan Johnson just did a 116 flat. Our Muhammad Ali just did a 116 flat. They are absolutely dead even on pace here tonight at the Thank You Zach Lindler Brazilian Grand Prix. Running through turn six, turn seven, and turn eight complex here. Our Muhammad Ali, he's going to use everything in his power to try and consider the following, consider where a pass can be made. They dispatched Clint Haltman. Clint Haltman is just ready to take home P3 and have a conversation with me about how he tried to defend, but he couldn't really do it. But here comes R. Muhammad Ali. He comes out of Young Sal. He has all the power in the world. Is he going to choose to use it? I do not see a flashing green light bulb, which means it's not time yet for R. Muhammad Ali. He's going to keep P2 right now on hand. He's going to look the inside, look to the outside, look back to the inside again. The answer is no. Not this time around. They both handled that with grace. Our Muhammad Ali ran a 115.5. Jordan Johnson ran a 115.8. And then Clint Altman's just sitting there running a 115.9. I mean, heck, when you're running the same kind of pace as our leaders are running, that's an excellent day because Hunter Adesti ran a 116.7. And that's the fourth fastest car on the track right now. Meanwhile, Ben Fiore, he's down in P6. He's still sniffing down that diffuser, Cohen Evans. If you want some information on their last laps, Cohen Evans was a 116.4. Ben Fiore was also a 116.6. So a two-tenths of a second difference between the two of those cars there. That will be much to see if Ben Fiore can do a little bit of maneuvering, maybe a little bit of, you know, getting the power off the corner and find his way to the lead. Meanwhile, our Muhammad Ali, the man in a moment in emotion, is trying his best right now to maintain the gap and try and even catch Jordan Johnson. He got the gap down to four tenths of a second last time by. This time by, it is six tenths of a second, which means Jordan Johnson was two tenths of a second faster than our Muhammad Ali. And the stats show our Muhammad Ali. Kofi Halton, what? Happen! He's off the track! He's out of the race! He snapped it off Young Sal! He put the power down too much trying to catch those leaders and just simply sent it into the wall! That's not the first time this season that Clint Holtman has just sent it and wrecked in a race. In fact, Mr. Nordberg, I believe we saw that at Road Atlanta, and then I saw it at Germany. I guess I'm just bad luck for Mr. Altman, but never mind. That means, wait a minute here. Did Hunter Odessi just pass a leaf? I believe he did. I, I, oh, never mind, I am crazy. Sorry, I must be on the drugs. Because we got our mom and the leaf, he has passed he has passed. Our, he, he has passed under Odesti again. That's great for him. I guess so. But here he comes. They both have overtake on. Both of these cars are using all the horsepower in the world right now. And Gordon Johnson in a defensive maneuver. Our Muhammad Leaf because he needs to try to catch him. Last time by our Muhammad Leaf 115.3. Jordan Johnson. Last time by by any chance you want to know. Um. 115.6, side by side, track racing down the line. Both of these cars don't like to give an inch. In fact, they like to have a lot of contact. But here comes Jordan Johnson. He goes to the outside. He actually took a lot of extra ground. Some would say going off the track to advance position. They're fighting to and nail up the corner. Here they come. Johnson goes wide, he holds it firm, he almost hit a leap, he's to the inside again, these cars are going to have an excellent battle in the turning, here comes Orba on the lead, back to it, does he have it, yes, he does, an excellent pass, but here he comes, heading down into the end cell. what does Jordan Johnson do now, will he follow him, remember they both have the charge overtake, they both just got finished using it, but here comes Jordan Johnson. He is going to do everything in his power to take the toe. 
What will Elite do? He goes to the inside. It's going to be another drag race up the hill. They touch wheels. Bang wheels. Blast of the late breakers. A late break. Slate pass to run wide. Johnson gets the power down. The switch back. They're through turn three here. A has got the inside line. It's wheel to wheel. They're now side pod to side pod. Drag race down the back stretch. Wheel contact with net code. They go into it. And Johnson's around. Johnson is around. Oh my goodness gracious me. Untap amongst the top two. We're going to get a replay. Here's our Muhammad Ali's perspective. Did he hit him off the track? They are side by side and... Um, let's take a look at it again. That's difficult to tell. It was two laps to go. But... I, I mean, I, I net code maybe? I, I really don't know. Meanwhile, Jordan Johnson's on the overtake. The race is pretty much over for him. We're now on the, we're now on to the final lap. Let's go to our Muhammad Ali. Let's walk him home. Our Muhammad Ali began this season with a mission become the first ever three-time world champion in the CIL Formula Collegiate Championship. He succeeded in this notion last week at Watkins Glen when he finished in, I believe it was P9 in race one. He scored two points. That's all he needed to do. He went into this race with nothing to lose and just all to play for. The man runs through the last few corners here. He gets into that turn seven, turn eight complex. He has the overtake turned on. This is the typical R. Muhammad Ali parade lap. Just enough overtake to get it done. Through Yun Sao, hitting it home. R. Muhammad Ali, the Singaporean slinger. I've called him home for you several times this season. I'll call him for you one more time. Win of race two and a thank you, Zach Glendler, Brazilian Grand Prix is our Muhammad Ali. He did it going from 19th to first. Meanwhile, Jordan Johnson P2, Hunter Hadesti P3, baby. His first ever CIL Formula Collegiate Podium and alumni victory for him tonight. Cohen Evans, P4, Benjamin Fiore, P5, Bradley Skinker's going to come across the line in P6. Meanwhile, P7 is Thomas Toomey, P8, Athena LeClaire, P9, Jason Wallet, and P10 with a point score to end the season, Andrew Burrell, and Klingon Smith spins in celebration. And meanwhile, it looks like Johnson and Aleef are... They're either driving in formation or they're going to have it out. They both do not look happy at each other. That's, I believe, a Ball State car spinning up. Johnson carries on. A Leaf's going to burn down some rubber. He well deserves it. He's done all he needs to do. Looking at Hunter Hadesti now. Is he going to burn down some rubber? Maybe he should. Maybe he shouldn't. He just scored a podium after all. The man's wiggling in celebration here. Running through those corners there. But an excellent race to call, an excellent race to watch. We're going to hope to get our three interviewees in the room as Hunter Hadesti goes, the, goes off the track. Looks like he was going to the rally stage. As now he's going to go through some grass here, cut some grass. Looking at our Muhammad Ali there, he's on his parade lap. The world champion deserves it. He's won the championship now three different times in his career. And won more CIL FC races than I can count. Hunter Hadesti burned down some rubber over there by the last few sets of corners. Here comes our Muhammad Relief as, you know, he's going to come up this hill here and have all the fun. Well, there's a car that's dead on track. 
and he will come to rest. Meanwhile, let's go through our finishing order here. Our Muhammad Leaf wins at the Ball State University with Jordan Johnson out of P2 at Kent State. P3, Hunter Adesti out of Columbus University with P4, Cohen Evans out of Ipiui. P5, Benjamin Fiore out of Marist College with P6, Bradley Skinker out of Ball State University. P7, University of Virginia's Thomas Timu, P8, Athena LeClaire in her last CIL race in P8 out of St. Clair College. P9, Jason Wallet out of Drexel. P10, Andrew Burrell in the final point scoring position in P10. P11 is Tyler Klingensmith with P12, Austin Long, P13, Aiken Lamar, P14, Nicholas Patinella, P15, Zach Lindler, who we will be joining us up in the booth. P16, Cale Davidson, P17, Clint Altman, P18, Adrian Tubakovic, P19, Mark Turek, and P20, Alan Hong. The rest are as follows. Andrew Williams, P21, Lucas Moody, P22, Alexander Diamond, P23, and Jake Cummings in P24. That is our final rundown of the cars this season we have one car in the interview waiting room i believe we, we need to get zach lindler we need to get jordan johnson and we need to get our our muhammad leaf we will be interviewing zach lindler last but we we will be getting hunter hadesti jordan johnson and our muhammad leaf they will be coming on in and doing what they have to do yes we're going to grab hunter first though mr hunter hadesti the man in a moment uh correct me if i'm wrong as the resident cil historian am i talking to you for your first podium interview uh that would be correct i don't really know fair enough well mr hadesti, legitimate podium wise yes Legitimate podium winner here. He's also well, the Olympic class well, winner. Well, here we are. What a man and a moment and emotion. I knew one of these days in my podcast I would have Hunter Hedesti in here. And all I have to say is talk me through your second race. You led laps for the first time in your CIL career. I did. It was great until uh, the inevitable happened. Uh, yeah, just got a really good launch, and then went uh, around the outside of two, me at turn one. And then from there, just uh, hit the overtake and tried to get as much of a gap as possible. Certainly went a lot better than uh, start at race one, so I was happy with that. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Now, um, Mr. Hedesti, uh talk me through... Um... I guess you had you lost a podium position, but gained it back because of Haltman's mistake. Um, were you hoping? Were you praying that a Leaf and Johnson crashed because they they certainly had contact? Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Uh, yeah, well, I mean it's always fun to watch those two go at it, but then uh, things were getting a little spicy there, and I saw uh, Jordan drop back a bit. So I was hoping, but. Uh, I mean, I'm still over the moon with P3, so. Of course, of course, of course. Now, Hunter, we, we thoroughly enjoyed watching you this season. We thoroughly enjoyed watching you drive. And now we finally get to have you up here in my in my podcast so we can have a little bit of a conversation. Um, it's been thoroughly enjoyable. Do you have anybody to thank before you leave tonight? Oh, shout outs to the whole Orange Wheel Racing crew uh, and the admin team and the broadcast team and the stewards. Uh, shout out to all you lovely people. Uh, this would not be possible without those volunteers. Yeah, it's been a great season. Uh, I really like the Super Formula from the get go and uh, hope to see it back or at least a version of it. So we will be back to represent OWR and, of course, Clemson University. Thank you, thank you, and as always, keep racing, my friend. Same to you. Now we're going to bring Jordan Johnson into the booth. But... Mr. Johnson, uh, first time this season I have had the pleasure of having you on the podcast here in the interview booth. Uh, 
I uh, I have a couple questions mainly because we couldn't get to it. And what happened race one for you to one start twentieth and then finish twenty second? Uh, well, Leaf and I had a gentleman's agreement to kind of just not practice, not qualify, and just kind of go out and race just for fun. Uh, so that was the whole idea. And then when the session opened, I was at the gym, so kind of doubled down on that. Uh, and then then turn one, a Leaf committed murder uh and unfortunately i was collateral damage to that uh so it, it is what it is it was just one of those turn one things really fair enough fair enough and then we get to race two you climb from 22nd all the way to first you, you get passed by our muhammad leaf but uh, talk me through that that altercation with two laps to go um do you think Netco? Do you think he gave you no room? Do you think you pinched to no avail? What, what happened from your from your perspective? No, I, I really looking at. I only have to look at it once, and I can tell you it was Netco. Our cars never even came close to touching each other. There was still probably a couple inches, uh, and my car got swung around like he had dive bombed me from twenty cars back full throttle. And so it was nothing he did. He left me enough space. I didn't squeeze him too hard. We were gonna make it through that corner perfectly fine. If we were running these cars in real life, it was just a matter of Netco decided he apparently drove over me and went flying into the outside barrier. Then by the time the car was straight, it caught back up and decided, oh no, he was perfectly fine. So uh, it's nothing that he did, nothing that I did. It was just really one of those net code things. And unfortunately, net code's been really bad recently. And with high downforce formula cars, it's only worse. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, Mr. Johnson, before we let you go this evening, is there anyone you would like to shout out on the broadcast? Uh, yeah, of course, just my team, Apex Racing Academy. Pick me up, all of our sponsors and partners, VRS, SDK, uh, of course, our Apex Racing team, the main team, Simputer PC Systems and Stormforce Gaming, just giving us all the support that they can every weekend and out and just making it all possible. Of course, of course. Uh, we hope to see you in future CIL seasons. And as always, keep racing, my friend. Thank you. We now move on to the man that we know for a fact was going to win eventually. Bring him in here, Mr. R. Muhammad Alif. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Alif, I yep. have had a conversation with you every time I have called the race this season. And yeah, it's I always, sure that. <laughs> it, it, is all, it is always in this position when I'm talking to you after a victory. Uh, tonight, I can at least ask... Um, how hard was it? Because you started in nineteenth. Yeah, I made I made it difficult for myself, uh, and it was very fun. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I, I was pulling moves left, right, and center, uh, going around the outside of the last corner. Like, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah, it happened. <laughs> and then, yeah, the goal was to win, and and uh, I think it was very unfortunate with the netco with Jordan. Uh, we were having a very good battle up till then. But yeah, still good. Uh, yeah, good to have the win. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, I heard enough about the shenanigans in race one where there was an attempted murder. But um, you know, <laughs> uh, best best thing I can describe is just uh, best thing I can ask is over the course of this season, you are now a three time champion in CIL Formula Collegiate. It, and if I'm being quite frank with you, there hasn't really been much competition. You have many more seasons left to go with us, especially with Ball State. Um, what is the future at hand for you and your career? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going to be working very hard over the summer, trying to uh, go into the FIA Motorsports games. I think that's one of my priorities, as well as uh, doing mobile championships with, uh, in SRO. So that's kind of where my my path leads to, I feel. I've also been training hard in the gym just to prepare myself just in case if there's any like uh, real-life opportunities which may come about. So that's kind of where it is. I'm just, you know, just pushing myself, just trying to, trying to motivate the team, trying to teach the team as much as I can as well, um, as well as just try to be impeccable uh, on my own driving. So, yeah, that's kind of where it's headed right now. Um, you know, if you guys 
are watching and you would like to give me an opportunity in a real car, please, you know, you always know who to <laughs> who to call. But uh, yeah, it's just just you know, just being on the grind, um, focusing on the tiniest details, details, um, getting my eye rating up. I think that's going to be a very big goal of mine um, uh, over the summer. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I'll be sure to give Mr. Uh, Mr. Letterman a call. I think we can get you in an indie car sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> but um, other than that, my friend, it has been excellent to watch you this season. It's been excellent to call you to many race wins and a championship. And as always, keep racing, my friend. Thank you very much, my friend. would have like lightly nudged each other and still made it through like we could have both just straight oh god what happened um technical difficulties have occurred um but we are back now it is time for a special interview he has led this championship for three seasons and we need to have one last conversation with him mr zachary lindler let's bring him into the booth mr lindler uh as a teammate a team owner and a friend, and a competitor, and a fellow admin, and everything all above friend, colleague. Welcome to my podcast. Welcome to the booth. Um, <laughs> so that's what you're doing with my uh, my series broadcast now. It's your podcast. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, tonight was your final lapse. Tonight was your final race with us here in the CIL Formula C, at least for the foreseeable future. We we are uncertain of your plans uh, going into the, into the distant future. But for now, your final evening as the series director. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, it hasn't been a very easy three seasons, but that was expected uh, when we first came up with Formula C. Um, I believe this was the fall of 2022. Yeah. Um, the people of the CIL came to us as the league administrators and they said, hey, we want to do something new uh, for our road division. And we tossed around the idea and we said, well, what if we did like an open wheel formula series? And I stepped up to be the director and I kind of took this series under my wing, made it what it is, um, but not by myself at all. I've had a phenomenal administration team, uh, Josh, Nick, Ryan, Drew, uh, Scott, even though he's no longer with us. He's not dead. He's just gone. Um, everybody who's participated in Formula C, uh, the Ball State guys, the Wingate guys, St. Clair, Clemson, everybody on OWR, uh, as well as all of our one-off team members out there. Um, big thank you for, 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 for racing with us. You have made Formula C what it is. We would not be here at all without you. Uh, big thanks to you guys as well, that broadcast. Um, I'm usually in the booth on Monday, but Wednesday, it's it's y'all's turn. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, Matt, for producing, you've done a phenomenal job, as well as Nick, you in the booth. Looking forward to hearing more of that in the future. Uh, but also Lucas and Edward and everybody else who's been a part of the production team this year for Formula C. You guys are the bomb. Um, and for you, for the viewers at home, um, everything these guys do here on the set is for you all viewers at home. Uh, everything that I do is for the drivers and for you as well. Uh, so thank you for everybody for tuning in. Um, thanks to the CIL again for an incredible few seasons, but uh, moving on to, a, whew, excuse me again, a different stage in life. Um, I just won't have the time to, to, to properly see to the league that uh, and give it the attention that it deserves. So. I have no doubt that whoever's coming in behind me is going to be an incredible fit. Uh, there's going to be some big, bright new ideas that come in. This league's going to continue to grow. Uh, and I'm really excited to see who takes that job next. Indeed, indeed, indeed. 
Mr. Lindler, obviously because this is an interview, proper interview, let's talk about your race. Um, started 17th, and you finished 15th. Talk me through it. Uh, well, what a better way to go out in proper Spindler fashion than to uh, dump the car on lap two. Um, I'm not really sure what happened. I just got some snap over steer going into 12 on, in that corner. We had an amazing lap one. I think we got about five or six positions uh, from in that first sector. Um, car started to get settled into a pace in lap two, and the car just stepped right. out on us. We went into the grass and uh, just never really drove right from there. So it's my mistake. It's been kind of the story of the season. Um, but, yeah, just a really, really unfortunate race. Uh, and in fact, me and Alif and Jordan were watching the incident that I'm sure y'all caught on camera, the, the, the incident in turn four on 19. Um, yeah, unfortunate way for that battle to end because I was watching that unfold kind of in my rear view mirror about to go a lap down. And then I saw that it was just Alif, and I was like, oh, man. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well, sir, this wouldn't go without saying... I hope you watched the beginning of this stream because there was a thank you video to you. I hope you watched an initial monologue because I gave my personal thanks and in, in the time I had. If you want to rewatch it over, I highly encourage you to. That's what I'm going to go pull up right now. In, to make sure we... in proper fashion, I'll leave it to you. Any shout outs you want to make before we send you off? Oh, gosh. I think I've already done most of my shout outs. Uh, all the admins who helped me out uh, and are amazing people. Um, everybody who drives in the league, everybody who watches Formula C and all you fans at home. Uh, you guys for putting on the broadcast, my OWR teammates, um, all the screen motorsports guys as well. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on stream, but thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts, Cork Sport Mazda Performance, um, Chemical Guys. I think I got everyone. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, wherever you go in life, go with grace and go with God. Have the utmost faith in what you are doing and how you do it. This has been an excellent three seasons under your guidance and under your leadership. This league would not be, this series would not be where it is without you. This league would not be where it is without you. And as always, keep racing, my friend. Nick for your kind words and thanks for all that you do as well and uh, never know I might, I might pop back in here at some point and now it is time if you could put the camera on me for just one second for my final monologue of the year we started this 14 race season in the cold bitterness of January. Maybe there was already a pretense as to who was going to win the championship, but it was an unknown. They were contested. Many winners were had. But ultimately, it was won by R. Muhammad Leaf, who closed out this season with an excellent win in the 28th competition over 14 rounds of CIL racing in the Formula Collegiate Championship. I have only had the pleasure this season of calling three races with you, but every time we have found a way to make it as entertaining as possible for you. I thank you to all the fans who have come out this season to watch our races, to watch us do what we do best, do what we love, drive race cars under a virtual medium. To all of the supporters, all the fans, all of the family, all of the colleges, all of the producers, all the admins, all the stewards, all the commentators, everyone that makes this tick, CIL would not be where it is today without you. I would know as a director of the Cup Series that it has been long and hard in Season 10, the 10th season of CIL. This league is growing into its fourth year of life. And it has had many challenges, but with those challenges, it has excelled to every measure. 
as we continue forward and we continue on, we know that we will face more challenges. We will face more different opportunities. But with that, a new day, a new dawn, and a new season. We take a little hiatus for the summer as we have summer plans that do not involve any one particular series. But we do invite you to come back for the fall for season 11 of CIL competition and season 4 of the Formula Collegiate World Championship. My name is Nick Stockner. My producer tonight was my, my producer tonight was Matthew Nordberg. We have one more race for season 10 tomorrow at the Collegiate Prototype Challenge. We have the Petite Grand Prix at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta out of Brasselton, Georgia. As once again I said, my name is Nick Stockner, CIL Flexwork innovations college cup series director i was your commentator tonight my producer was matthew nordberg i want to thank you all for this amazing season we look forward to watching you next season and as always keep racing my friends so long